So today's gospel is taken from uh, Matthew, and it's one of those gospels that is somewhat directed at priests. There you go. It happens. And it's one of those gospels that is a real wake-up call for priests, because it's interesting that like the scribes and the Pharisees, they did know a lot about the law. They had their study done, what we call the Old Testament. They were very, very familiar with. They knew the customs. They knew the traditions. They also had maybe added to them, made them maybe unnecessarily complicated. So there were all sorts of things, uh, like all sorts of details that you would think just don't, just don't really matter, but this is what they would focus on. Uh, when a, a lamb was being offered in the temple, for example, they had all sorts of regulations as to how exactly the throat should be cut. So, for example, you couldn't just take a standard knife and just because if the if the if the full blade disappeared, that was considered stabbing, not slicing. Sorry to go into the detail, but like this is like this is what they got they got hung up on. So, and then in order for it not to be a stabbing but to be a slicing, the blade couldn't disappear. All of the blade could not disappear into the animal. So then they had to get kind of cleavers, like a square blade, so that so that the part of the blade is still visible as the slicing is going on. And I said these are the kind of things that they they got they got really hung up on. You know, was is that is that a valid sacrifice? Because if if the blade disappeared into the lamb, it wasn't kosher, and the sacrifice wasn't valid in their eyes. Do you know what I mean? So they get stuck on these details, but then when it comes to actual mercy when it comes to authentic, selfless, self-giving love, when it comes to charity, when it comes to all of the, the really important basics, that's not so much one or the other, but get the basics right first. Otherwise, you're just you're getting lost in detail and forgetting the heart of our faith. So, so the, the Lord is really calling them out. Alas, you scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites, you who shut up the kingdom of heaven in men's faces, neither going in yourselves nor allowing others to go in who want to. Again, he's, he's talking to priests, like the priests of the day, but the same message is, is, is relevant in our day, that we as priests, like we can, we can guide people to God and we can actually be a hindrance as well. If we don't get this right, if I don't get my vocation right, I can actually be a hindrance to people's eternal salvation. It's just a phenomenally ludicrous responsibility that's given to priests. Do you know that, that if... If we get this right, we can, we can do great good. And if we get it wrong, my goodness, we can tear things down around us. It's, it's, it's crazy. But in all of this, just before Mass, I, w- I was reading the readings and, and nothing was really striking me. But then the, the, the old translation, the new translation of, of a line that we say at Mass was just coming to me. You know, Lord, I am not worthy to receive you. you know, Lord, I am not worthy to have you under my roof. But only say the word and my soul shall be healed. That if we approach Mass or any of the liturgies, that, or any of our sacraments or our grace in general, if we approach all of this with a profound sense of humility, it is so much more efficacious, effective in our lives. If we approach the sacraments, powerful and all as they may be, with indifference, or even with a kind of a, almost a sense of pride, like, this is my thing. I'm doing this thing, you know. And this can happen at, at all levels, to be honest, in church ministry as well. You know, I'm in the choir. You won't sing. No, no, no. You will not sing. I'm singing. You will not lead the rosary. I always lead the rosary. Okay, Bridie, get back into the second row because I have always sat in the front row. And thou shalt not pray the rosary, <laughs> right? That's my job. You know, so it's the same kind of idea you know, where, where we get some sort of a kind of a religious responsibility and don't want to let go of it because it makes us feel good, makes us feel powerful, makes us feel important. It's not just a priestly thing. It can happen to us too. But, but any sort of a ministry, any sort of a ministry, this is my thing. Well, if it's your thing, you're not serving it. You're not serving. You're not, the, the word ministry means to serve. You are not ministering if, you, if this is your kind of, you know, party piece, if you will then it's serving you. you know, it's actually serving your ego. I feel important when I do these things. That's why I do them. Okay, well, then you're not serving the Lord. That's, that's not serving God. That's serving yourself. Under a nice religious guise, but you're serving yourself, really. And I say it can happen to us too. And the Lord is, the Lord is so blunt with, with, with us as priests uh, about that. Like, you blind guides. You know, it's, it's a powerful responsibility. So, how do we... How do, we, how do we protect ourselves from, from this? How do, we, how do we stop ourselves becoming what the Lord is, is, is accusing them of today? Humility. 
humility. We serve these mysteries. We don't create them. I didn't sit at the Last Supper and invent this liturgy. This is given to me. I serve it. I, I, I minister, so I, I, I pass it on. But I don't, I don't invent this. Like This isn't my creation. This is given to me. I just have to pass it on faithfully. Grace then is given through the priesthood to forgive sins, uh, celebrate Mass. Uh, five of the seven sacraments need, need require a valid priesthood. And those, those treasures are kind of, sort of passed down from heaven to me to give to others. But I didn't make them. They come maybe through me, yes, but they're not mine. They're not mine. Or in the, in even similarly, like, even a kind of a, a different kind of a level, but if you're praying for someone, or you have a kind of a deliverance ministry, or a prayer ministry, uh, like, good things may happen. Great, people may be healed, people may be converted, people may, see, may come to you and say, now, Tommy, I um, went to your prayer meeting there four years ago, and, uh, you know, you, you, you were praying with me, like, and it just it really changed me, like, it really, helped my, it really helped my life, and really helped me see where I was going wrong. And the danger is then that Tommy might be listening to this, oh, no, no, it wasn't me. Well, it was a little... I mean, I helped, like, I mean... <laughs> but, or he may even say on the outside, on the outside, say, no, 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 it wasn't me at all, but inside you're like, wow, well, feeling pretty good about myself right now. I received an email from someone recently, and they were talking about uh, understanding their own heart and understanding their own conscience. And she's a person who's lived a, a very, very good life, a, ver a very Christ-centered life. You know, but she's always striving for more, thank God. Always striving to, to, to just like, root out any vanity or any ego that's in there. And so she asked the Lord like, to, to help her to see her soul, as it is before God, to help her to see, help her, to see her sins. And she said, one particular thing struck her, and she will never forget it, was that she saw how, during one of her prayer ministries, how there was a certain kind of a, a satisfaction, a kind of a, you know, patting oneself on the back, that the prayer ministry was going so well and that she was, she was part of it. And the way she described it, I thought was fantastic. She said, when, when I saw this, this attitude before God, she said, I understood that it was theft. Theft. I thought that is interesting. That is, because I'm stealing God's glory. Any ministry, any person that's healed or helped by music ministry or prayer ministry or the sacraments or whatever it may be, all these people are helped ultimately, like it's God's grace. Through whatever channel he chooses, yes, but it's God's grace. It's God's grace. And so if we take any of that for ourselves, it is theft. And this, this, this really, really struck her. And when she said it to me, I thought, wow, that is good. That is good. Like it's, just, it's really good to, to be aware of that kind of thing, you know, and, and to ask myself, you know, does, do I do that? Just to be, to be aware that this is actually a temptation. You know, the way when we do our, our examination of conscience, for people who maybe don't attend Mass a lot, their examination of conscience is, did I kill someone? No. That's it. I think, yeah, yeah, we're fairly, we're fairly all right. Like, do you know, because when you're not exposed to these kind of spiritual realities, you don't, you don't even think to ask yourself, you know, have I put God in the first place? Uh, so it would like to, 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 to ask ourselves honestly, you know, on all of our ministries in the church, whatever they may be, have I ever looked for that kind of pat on the back? Or was I ever upset when I didn't get it? Because if I was upset when I, when I didn't get it, well, who were you serving? I mean, God's heart, and you, don't worry, he'll, he'll, he'll thank you. He's, he has probably already thanked you in ways you don't, you're not aware of, but he'll thank you in heaven if, if not sooner. But who are you doing it for? Because if, if we're doing it for ourselves, if, if we're doing it for our own gratification, then we're stealing, stealing from God. And again, it's all this, this kind of lack of humility, lack of, Lord, I am not worthy to have you under my roof. Just say the word and I, sh I shall be healed. My soul shall be healed. My family, my memories, my hurts, my wounds, my ego. But Lord, I'm not, I'm not worthy to celebrate Mass. I'm not worthy to receive Holy Communion. I'm not worthy to receive your grace. But the story doesn't stop there. You know, because it's true, we're not worthy. But he makes us worthy. So if we're not worthy, and he makes us worthy, and all that's happening is coming from him, then like, who are we in front of these cosmically ginormous mysteries who are we? 
You know, who am I in front of God's majesty passing grace through me to touch people or, you know, to bring Holy Communion to people or absolution, whatever it is. Who am I? That's what I am. My fingers are even too big. <laughs> I need a smaller finger. There you go. <laughs> like, you're nothing. We're nothing. But again, the story doesn't stop there, otherwise we'd get depressed. So, and I'm not worthy to receive you. But only say the word and my soul shall be healed. So you lift me up. You raise me up. I am nothing but, but you love me as I am. And it's this kind of you know, stub of a pencil analogy that uh, St. Teresa Blasio talks about. That stub of a pencil, not that pretty, probably half tune at the top and the rubber has been all kind of digested and scrubbed out and it's all looking pretty, what's good English for rank? Awful, looking really unattractive, okay? But yet in the hand of a master, you know, a sketch. You can, you know, we, there used to be a lot of them in Rome when I was in seminary in some of the tourist piazzas. You know, people would come and there'd be a guy there with a sheet of paper and he'd just sketch a, a caricature, like, but just incredibly, just so quick. But the stub, little stub of a pencil, he'd sharpen on the, on the pavement, like, you know, it's, it's just incredible in the hands of a master. And that's what we are. The stub of a pencil in the hands of a master. Pencil does not write on its own. It needs someone who has something to say. It needs someone who, who knows what they're doing. So we have a purpose, but everything comes from God. and Everything should return to him. All from him, all returning to him. And then all these things start to make sense. As a priest, now I know what I'm supposed to be doing. I take what I need, or what the Lord gives me, I pass it on, and then next, whatever the next thing is. Like, I don't... And that attitude will, will protect me. In any ministry we have in the church, Saxon, singer, bench steriliser, uh, whatever it may be, you know, I do my act of service, and then, and then I leave. And if there's someone better than me, or someone more, better equipped, fine, okay, they, they can do it, I, I don't mind you, it's not, it's not my thing, I'm just here to help. It's all about him, it's all about the Lord. It's just all about him. And with this attitude, like we'll be, I think, so much, so much freer and so much happier. And then our service really becomes that. It becomes service. I'm serving the Lord. And in that attitude, we're able to accept and experience so much more from the Lord. Because otherwise, we're just actually stuck in our own little bubble of, of me. But if we break out of that, then the Lord can do so much in us and through us. So we ask the good Lord today to help us to see our part in his plan, our role, and that we may humbly accomplish it all for his greater glory. Amen.